Hey, hey, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. Are we out? Are we done? That's us. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Every time. The joke that never gets old. Unlike us. Uh, so old. Anyway, how are you guys today? <laughs> How's everyone doing? Welcome to Ben and Declan on a roll. Uh, this week, if you haven't checked any of our uh, tasty social media content leading up to the stream, we are talking about lore. Lore. <laughs> Referring to social media as tasty? <laughs> Is that what got you? No, I'm just on about, sorry, I, I, I'm just laughing at the other video, the, the non-video you put up. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> the lore yeah, behind yeah, yeah. this show. <laughs> yeah. Um, the one you saw today on, on At Home Request social channels was not my first take. Uh, it, it sounds like it, but it wasn't. Uh, Ben's rewriting yes, Shakespeare's exactly. works. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yeah, very much so. Uh, and if you join our Patreon, you can see that exclusive. We don't have that, but uh, it probably, I, you know, if you DM me on Discord, I'll send it to you. Um, <laughs> I'm not precious. Uh, welcome to. Is this episode four? It feels like episode four hundred in a good way. <laughs> it is. It's episode four. And nice. We had. Uh, we we kind of we we talked a lot about lore and myth and stuff last time. But we, uh, Ben and I were kind of only saying that we kind of feel like we only kind of scratched the surface of it. And mm. we focused predominantly on, you know, incorporating it into your world building. And that's, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. That's so much fun to do. But now that you've done all that, what the hell do you do with it? Like, mm. so that's kind of what we want to talk about this evening. Like you've done all the work, you've yeah. done all the, the creating stuff. <sighs> How do you use it? <laughs> exactly. If, if episode three was outside in, this is now inside out. So you've, you've gobbled up all your inspiration and now you're going to turn it into something unique and preciously yours or weave it into any pre-written modules or any pre-written games that you want to use uh, throughout your throughout your gaming uh, sessions and stuff. Um, but it's going to start with, uh, it's just us. It's just a dynamic duo this time, so we're not going to cut to any interviews, although we do have a string of incredible interviews lined up. Uh, we're getting them all edited together and in the bank and ready to share on screen uh, and on stream with you guys in future episodes. So really looking forward to, it's taking every, th it's like taking every cell in my body not to tell you all the people. Um, but for, you know, for classic theatrics, we won't. <laughs> Even though I desperately want and to. And that clickbait. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that classic, uh, what do you call it, um, signature edging that you find here on TA Dungeon Stream. Uh, yeah. I was going to say I'm rubbing off on Ben, but I don't think I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of uh, working together <laughs> on, on, on streams, uh, I'm going to interview Declan a little bit because Declan's games and Declan's lore is something that uh, I personally can't get enough of. He, he'll let you know. Uh, I'll let you know. All the players I play with will annoyingly let you know that uh, I'm that player at the table who, when it comes to lore, it's like I never get full. I'm gluttonous for it. Um, but it also means that I have a couple of problems as a DM, which we're going to get into later uh, in a in a section we're calling teach me how to, and then this this week, it's teach me how to lore. Um, so I'm going to ask Declan a couple of questions about lore specific to the problems I'm facing as a DM. Um, because as a player, you can just gobble it up and you can forget about it if you really want to. Um, so without further further ado, Declan, are you ready to be interviewed? Is there anything... Oh, we've probably some community news. Do you want to share some amazing community news we found out today? I, yeah, yes, because I think it's class. Um, mm. You... If you caught the last episode, um, Ben interviewed Neil from Bramble Bramble Heart. Yes, yeah, Bramble Heart Games. Uh, Fay Earth. Sorry, that, that that's so reductive. Like, but like, it's like every time like, like Neil from Bramble Heart Games, I'm like Fay Earth, though, right? Like, because like, it's just Neil yeah. is so synonymous with Fay Earth. I mean, he created it, so it's his thing. But uh, they, we, you had talked to him about you know his board building and his Kickstarter for his own game. Um, mm -hmm. and that I think was halfway through the Kickstarter at that point. Uh, it finished as of like a couple of hours ago, mm -hmm. um, and it was a massive success. Like they, they've yeah. hit their target goal. So Fey Earth, uh, is going to be printed and published and available. And, uh, Ben's getting a DM screen. I, 
Yes. I kept. It was one of those things where I was like, I keep meaning to like bump up my my tear backing. I was like, I'll just bump the tear back. I'll mm-hmm. bump the tear back. And I I didn't. So hopefully when you know the way they Kickstarter just finish out, kind of like, and you can add to this afterwards. So because yes. I, I want a DM screen uh, for. Yeah, it's. Uh, I hope you don't get it. Um, not. I feel bad for you, but if there's something I love, it's having something that someone else doesn't. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Exclusiveness. Um, I love. No, that's not true. I, I would happily share my screen with you, uh, <laughs> or encourage you to get your own. Um, and yes, yeah, so Fire Earth will be coming to a to a con, to a gaming convention, to a table, to a DM, to a bunch of players and gaming group near you very shortly especially if you're one of the lucky people who backed it and it's on their way and it's going to be pretty i was reading some of their updates today uh the game's already in production so it's not like backed and then the, the process starts it's already pretty well there so it's going to be a quick from what i hear pretty quick turnaround which is fantastic yeah. so I'm, I'm thrilled for yeah them. massive congrats again neil i don't know if you are watching this or if you're watching this on vod seriously well done that is it's amazing um to see to see that come through for you and after all the work and stuff that goes into it is just i'm so glad mm-hmm. that you got the the payoff for it so well done yes actually while we're if you are watching along um our prompt for this evening something that we're looking for you to help us out with as we chat about lore is just favorite lore moments from your games that could be as a dm kind of neat little world building lore that you've weaved in Maybe it's a player's backstory that they've given you and you've managed to turn into a full kind of campaign arc uh, for your games. It could easily be that kind of nice little player switcheroo when a player surprised you with the lore drop or something they brought to the table or uh, big payoffs, which is something I love where it's something's like teased in the first kind of zero to 10 games and then it pays off kind of game finale. Uh, so if you have any amazing lore stories from your table and uh, look, I know the nature of lore, you're going to be typing for a little bit. Don't worry. <laughs> Send us those big, long paragraphs. We will read them in chat and bounce off them in the closing segment of the show, which is where we're going to lore build some things together. Um, that is a loose agenda of what we're going to chat about, but definitely you're in the hot seat. I have some pretty big questions for you about lore. And as you know, I'm a big fan. So this ain't a gotcha interview, but I'm going to start with a, a tough one. What is lore? <laughs> How do you spell lore? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what, are we, what is this? <laughs> what is this thing that we've been talking about for the last yeah. uh, two episodes? Yeah. Um, I know, <laughs> but for anyone in the audience who doesn't know, what, what's lore? Uh, I guess, I mean, the the, the, the dictionary definition of it, it's stories. Like it's, it's stories. Um, and there can be a really uh it can, it can be really daunting like i think i i think for any for any for any player and for any dm to be honest particularly when you pick up a you know a, a book a, a brand new book from you know wizards or uh white wolf games or you know uh magpie games or anything like that and it's you are picking up this hefty hefty tome and there's this whole world that you have to figure out and explore and understand and then there's all the systems and the mechanics and everything else that goes into it the lore of it can be kind of daunting because it's that thing of like um sorry what part of the mountains were formed in the space-time continuum that fell out of a genie's lamp uh, a thousand years ago because there was a battle between a dragon and some space aliens like where 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 does all that come? so lore can be huge and it can be daunting um and it can also be very very small and very very com- like comforting to have um and i like I, I guess the best way to look at that is lore can be the whole history of this world it's gods it's stories and everything else that goes into it or it can be those little things that you uh you know you breadcrumb into your character's backstory about their connection to the city guard or their love of specific mushrooms in a forest or you know whatever it might be so lore can be this big big thing and lore can be this very very small thing if that answers your question <laughs> it does i think yeah, yeah it's a and it it brings to mind a couple of uh sort of lessons i've learned about lore as a dm which is you hit on something really nice there which is the scariness of lore sometimes it's like oh no i don't want to be 
I don't want to throw something out mid game as a reaction to a role and then not be thrown back in my face where you're like, well, you actually said in this part of the world that this, 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 and you're like, ah. Um, so it's that element of lore being used to liberate your storytelling and not handcuff your narrative. And I think that's a tough, um, it's a tough line to, to walk if you don't have a couple of like sneaky DM tricks to get you out of those situations. Um, so I'll, I'll be asking you about them in a moment. Uh, what are your sneaky trips, tricks so I can look out for them as a player? Uh, but I suppose the next question I have is, who do you think, and if it's multiple people, how much, who's responsible for lore at the table? Everybody and nobody. Like, I guess. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be one of those interviews, Ben. <laughs> um, uh, like, so everybody's responsible because that's the nature of tabletop role-playing games. It's a collaborative storytelling. Like That's the thing that we shouldn't forget. And that's the thing that I'm a big, big... It's like one of my favorite things about it is that getting everybody together uh, to be involved in it. And yes, every player at that table has different levels of maybe that responsibility. And uh, Ben, oh, sorry, actually, no, the horse was correct. Ben is responsible for the lore at everyone's table. So I'm yes. going to sit back. Uh, <laughs> no. Worlds, uh, <laughs> galaxies. I'm the watcher who watches over all your games. And I ask a simple question. What's happening? <laughs> what is lore? <laughs> what is lore? Um, but again, that, 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 that it, it's such a great question because the... Every time it's that thing, it's the DM's world. It's the DM's job to read the the handbook, the guide, the adventure prompt, whatever it is, and understand absolutely every single thing and know all these different intricate threads between, well, that's why the barkeep acts that way because they're worried about their over here and actually they're connected to this different clan in a different part of the world. And that's an awful lot to keep in your head and to build and to hold on to. Whereas... If everybody comes to the table, and this is why I mean it's everybody's and nobody's responsibility. If everybody comes to that table and says, hey, look, uh, sometimes things get said and I might have to retcon it because it is a thing of actually, you are right. In the first campaign, we did establish that and it's I've forgotten it. And now you've reminded me. So thank you. I remember that. Uh, and we're going to do it that way. So if we can just undo that role or go back a second, like, wonderful. We're not... You know, we're not doing this in front of, like, I, I'm also very aware that, like, Dylan from Hard Fart Tales is here, so we're not doing this in front of a live audience. They do. Um, yeah. But I have, you know, it, that thing to remember, you're not doing this in front of a live audience. You're not doing this uh, in a space that requires you to have 100% control on that the whole time as the DM or even as the players to be like, wait a minute. I'm not the note taker and I, the person who takes the notes is out sick today and we've forgotten who this goddess is and the DM is mad at us now because this is a really important figure that was mentioned, you know, eight months ago and we haven't talked about her since. Um, so I guess first and foremost, everybody comes together to, to tell the story and nobody is, uh, nobody, no one person has to do it all is the other side of it like we we all carry that lore with us and we remind each other of things like oh actually and our characters know this but i know this because it's in my backstory um and uh, it is it's it's huge like it, it is a it's a big big thing and i say this as somebody who like micromanages his worlds uh you know into a, a point of oh I've got all these things and these are responsible for this and this happens over here because of this. And then, oh, Ben's just asked me how people, you know, uh, what's the, is there a particular sign or a gesture used in this kingdom? Well, there wasn't, but actually now, Ben, there is because I've just thought of it. So now we, we've established something together. So, yes, I mean, I, I hope that it explains the everybody's responsible and nobody's responsible angle because I'm a big believer in that. I think so. And, it, and it, it touches on both things, which is everyone's responsible to absorb it and kind of like, make something of it, but also bring something. Yep. So kind of like, I'm going to add this in. And I share, um, the Horseborn chat is saying that they feel very guilty if someone calls them out on something they've contradicted themselves on as a DM. I share that guilt. I'm like, oh, because I feel like it breaks. For me, my 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 nervousness, which is why I'm so excited to talk to Declan about lore, because it's it's something I really admire in Declan's games, the 
the not only the kind of like the breadth of it, but also the flexibility of it. I feel like I build my lore like rigid little things that if something breaks, it all crumbles. Whereas it potentially should be more like, you know, trees in the wind that bends as the story needs. Um, and when someone goes like, well, hang on a second, this doesn't work like this or this doesn't work like this. For for years, I was like, oh, I've broken the game. They've not like, they're not going to enjoy it. They're kind of taken out of immersion. And there's, here's one of my sneaky little DM tricks. When I have that thing in my brain that goes shit, 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 shit. Uh, then the words that come out of my mouth during that is, roll me a history check. <laughs> or roll me a perception check. And, ooh, hey, if they get an Addy 20, uh, like, they got me. <laughs> oh my God, trying to sneak away, spotlight on me. But the hope is that they roll a little bit low, that it'd be like, you remember it this way. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So kind of it's breaking bringing that immersion back in through the fallibility of people uh, and the people being the, the characters. Um, yeah. For me, uh, I've that. you, you know, and you mentioned that sort of that, that flexibility in uh, the way I kind of structure the lore in my world. Uh, my best piece of advice that I can give, and it's a thing that um, it's, it's one of those one things where I'm like, oh, I've always done that as a DM. And I, I genuinely, with the exception of the first kind of games, if anybody ever watches this from my like original games 20 years ago, they're like, Declan was a railroader. And I was like, yes, I was Admiral Choo Choo. 100%. <laughs> All aboard. <laughs> 100. Like when I first started, I, I was a railroader. Um, figuring it out. Uh, but I've, um, I really have uh, learned and I, le- and I learned that very, very quickly because somebody reviewed one of my games once <laughs> and put it on the internet and it was really upsetting. <laughs> um, <laughs> and for journalistic purposes, where is that review? I will see if I can find it. Uh, no, it, no, he was very, <laughs> like, to be fair, he was very, very complimentary um, of my descriptive style. But he was like, I feel like that we're, I feel like we're in a movie and <laughs> Declan has a script. And I was like, are we not supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> I, I came prepared it would be unfair enough to kill children who didn't feel like their application forms in full I mean what's the um, but I the thing I will and I, 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 and I, I think this might help uh, with the kind of what uh, D- the horse boy was saying as well I have a um, I have a kind of a it's not, it's not a get out of jail free card but it's a get out of lower loophole card yep mm. that's what I said when we were there and over here they see that thing and they do it differently because again we said this in the the last episode uh lore comes from storytelling storytelling is an oral tradition and those stories change as we move down through it and my big big thing is like it's 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 why there's different gods in pantheons and stuff like that people worship at Mm. different gods and different ways of behaving you know acting according to their rites and rituals and stuff like that i'm uh, a big big one of the things I always hang on to is, well, that might be the case for these people. And this God exists over there as well, but they don't see them the same way. And mm. letting those kind of things not break, but bend. And kind of going, okay, yeah, that was true over there. And now that's different here <laughs> because that's the thing. Yeah. And like, again, it, it can be, uh, it, and if it breaks, it breaks. And just kind of go, yep, fair point. I'll write that down and I will try to remember it. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, yeah. That's... There's, there's nothing wrong with the, you got me. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. Um, speaking of things that are different in different places, I know you as a DM, you've got Arcanum, you've got Dow, and you probably have multitudes of other worlds that I'm not aware of. Is there any um, sort of thread throughout the Declan verse, like lore that you like using again and again, or, or things that are like just handy fallbacks. I mean, the reason I bring it up as well is because those gotcha moments, if you have a consistency in your own kind of like deitizing of your games, you'll like, that'll be second nature to you. Be like, no, I'm pretty sure I've always said it's a 20 hour day. Uh, yeah, pro tip, don't make your days 20 hours. <laughs> it complicates things. Just keep it to 24. You don't need to change something down. <laughs> that's, that's the lesson I learned. I've been calling things 10 days. It's a week. That's, that, is that yeah. a 10 day? Yes. <laughs> Just different parts of the world call it different things. <laughs> It depends on how many uh, fingers. In a bullywog society, a 10 day is just six days because they only have three little... <laughs> they can't on a 
and a basic system. Um, I yes, there are there are there are some. I I have some things that I love to hang on to, uh, in in a big big way. Uh, I it's really really you know that superstition things happen in threes. Uh, mm. I'm a big. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to have uh, in uh, in my world and in my lore. Um, you know, it's that thing of if I think of a god, I want to think three things about them, and have three and mm-hmm. have three things that okay. Ben's character knows this. Um, you know, uh, Horse Boy's character knows this, and you know, Dylan and Dragons doesn't know anything about them because they're from a different part of the world and they don't worship that god. But now mm-hmm. you each know a different thing about that god. And you might be able to connect those dots uh, and kind of go, well, actually, if we know this, what else do we need to know? Uh, so things happen in threes. Um, I'm also uh, a absolute, f- and I said this in kind of episode one, um, I'm very heavily inspired uh, by Shakespeare. I know that sounds like such a, I'm actually inspired by Shakespeare. Uh, but I, I genuinely, I am uh i draw an awful lot from uh his characters um and his storytelling methods and that ability to to weave comedy and drama together and not be like it's a drama it has to be serious all the time Mm -hmm. Uh, or it's a comedy it has to be silly all the time um so i'm the 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 weird sisters from macbeth uh is they're probably three of my favorite characters in literature um and I generally will have them represented in some way, shape, or form uh, in my world. And in and you mentioned, you know, Dowin and Arcanum. They're in. They're both in Dowin and Arcanum. We've. Uh, it's not a spoiler for Romance in the Dungeon. We've encountered uh, three hags, um, and they are sisters. And they are. And they they met. They they were the, you know the. The prologue to season two uh, uh you know uh flesh and blood and they it i i riffed off of the weird sisters uh incantation and prophecy for macbeth uh in that sort of like uh that moment on the mountains um so big big thing and then i've taken the same idea of these three sisters um and now transplanted them from the weird sisters from macbeth into the greek faiths and I've now incorporated uh, the three fates uh, in the world of Dowen. And I'm, I am I like to take these things and I like to use them all the time. I have in my home games, so games I, I generally don't stream, I have, I have a tendency to use uh, a character name all the time. And I don't know where he came from, uh, but I have this one character. He's called Artifice. And he is sort of a... Uh, usually that's sort of that kind of, you know, uh, Link, it's dangerous to go, you know, alone take this sort mm-hmm. of character. Uh, he is the, the quest giver. Um, I've never used him, actually, in any of my streams, I don't think. If anybody, yeah. if anybody wants to call me Artifice, specifically. Um, don't think so. Um, it's a ring of bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never used him there. Um, yeah, well, well, we'll keep an eye out for a little uh, deck and DM bingo. Where it's like, we've made an artifice. Yes, <laughs> we've got it. <laughs> um, it is something wonderful. It's I'm I'm I could fall down a rabbit hole because the opening of season two of the Rancing Dungeon, there is a prophecy there, and I think there was a lesson I learned listening to it as a fan, as a DM, which is leave your prophecies open. Which is all, like that's just good um, writing in the first place. But I was like listening to it. At, at the start of the season and being like, oh, that's probably this person. That's probably this person. That's probably this person. Then I re-listened to it at the end of the season. I was just like, oh, these could be multiple people. This could be anyone. And so it's uh, when you're writing those things, I think lore is one of those things that maybe don't like write it in pencil, not in pen, like and definitely not in permanent marker. There is a this there's a question in chat or rather a story in chat, which was prompting my. Uh, penultimate question and this is from the horse boy and they were saying in their first group they ever dm'd they were playing through the starter kit for 5e and they were very worried about giving the players enough clues to figure out the villain's goal without handing it to them on the platter which is is, i share that same kind of feeling sometimes and then there was a moment about 15 sessions in where they gave a small bit of tidbit lore it was the last piece of the puzzle for one of the players to piece it all together and at that moment when that player's eyes just went wide and they were like (gasps) was like so reassuring as a dm and I think it's one of those things where 
a little bit like if you're designing escape rooms or murder mysteries or, or any of those things. They, they tell you to give multiple clues, but not the same clues, varied up. And I'm always shocked. I, a, as a player, when I figure something out, and B, as a DM, when I'm like, how did you piece that all together? So one of my questions for you, Declan, is do you have any stories from any of the games, whether it's streamed or not streamed, like your favorite player lore pull that got them out of a pinch or you were just surprised that they'd remembered it. You, maybe you'd forgotten. You were like, you son of a bitch. I didn't know you held on to that. And that is perfect for this for this moment. I, um, yeah, there, there, there actually, there is. Um, and it, it is one of those, I kind of, I kind of got hoisted by my own petard uh, as a, it was basically um i was playing in a home game uh very much if you could imagine power rangers meets uh the greek mythos um mm -hmm. and you throw me into it and you're like Declan, you just have fun with the greek gods and we'll see what happens um i had a uh, so I, I built an NPC around uh, the sorceress Circe, uh, uh, or the enchantress, whatever you. you um, and philosopher, I think, is what the UK called. <laughs> <laughs> I had. Uh, I really wanted. Uh, I really wanted her to be in it. The players engage with it, and away they go with it. Um, and uh, I had her. The idea that she'd come in and she'd mess around and they'd fight her and she'd go off and towards the end of the game it became quickly clear that uh there was a much bigger thing at play uh between the gods that this wasn't just a the usual spat that there was a shift coming in uh the power structure and in prayer for them and so on and so forth and um uh, i had uh cersei had had quite a difficult uh relationship with um some uh like athena and uh aries and i had a player who would have been sort of a priest of uh athena um kind of pull together bits the things that i had been saying throughout the game about her uh she she was the you know she's the goddess of wisdom and strategy and her constant play against uh, Ares was that you can't win war with brute strength alone. There has to be more thought in it. Um, and while the gods were now vying to the players to, like, you have to fight for me, you have to fight for my cause, you have to fight for what we believe in, uh, Cersei was now this free agent because they didn't kill her. Like, they, they spared her. Uh -huh. And I literally had a player turn around and go... I was the one that pushed the group to not kill her because we understood her. And I did that because I thought it would be a good strategy uh, that we might be able to call on her again. So and literally full monologued at the table in the name of Athena, I call on Circe, the Enchantress. Um, uh, and like that, like it was that moment of, hang on a second, I've just been chin wagging for ages about uh mm. you need more than just you know power and to be level 20 to beat this big bad that's coming and yada 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 and now one of my players is doing it you know two sessions later about a character that we fought or we had in at the very start um a hundred percent not only was i completely like holy crap you're listening you're listening to the things i say but you're now taking them and using them to your own advantage. Um, and in a way that I, like, and not one of those like, aha, they got me moments, but in a way that I was just so mm -hmm. pleasantly taken aback by it that I was like, oh, that's class. And I'm literally, and I or I remember behind like, they just, it wasn't just they remembered her. It was the whole like, you've remembered to pull her through. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, like that, she was summoned into the battle. And that made a huge difference for them in the, in in the actual game that we played out over the next couple of hours. Um, so yeah, that was sorry. That's a long answer. Uh, no, but it's a great one, and it's a lovely, uh, like, bold journey of lore to the to the kind of like, you know, 
that feels like a Neverland happy thought of being like you're doing it, you're playing it, you're pulling on everything that like you're you're pulling from everything I've given you over the last couple of sessions, and it's and all to play for, which is one of the things I love about this game, which is like there's nothing off the table, so to speak. Um, I have one last question. It's a fan submitted question. This is from Ken Blifford, oh. aged eight, long time watcher, first time listener. He's wondering um, when it comes to season three of romancing the dungeon between you and them, and you know we can keep the audience out of it. Uh, what can we come to expect, and what should we uh, be keeping our backs? What's what's coming our way? What what do I need to be aware uh, of? That's a uh, uh, Ken's Ken, there. Before yeah. you obviously go to bed because you're eight, uh, and you shouldn't be watching mm-hmm. a stream on Twitch uh, for adults or listening to our podcast, Ken, because it's not for children. Um, I would tell you to listen to season one. Okay. And that and that's all, right. all, that's yeah, all I'm going to tell you, uh, Ken Blifford. Uh, I go to bed. Funny enough, uh, second question from Ken here. <laughs> Ken writes in saying, um, "Just just got this there." Uh, but season one doesn't have my favorite character, Ajelia Steele, in it. Um, so is there any oh, way to he, remix he, oh, him just, in? Just, just to break your heart, there, Ken. He's dead in season yeah. three, so, <laughs> oh, yeah, so right. I wouldn't get too yeah, attached. Ken, to Ken, has, uh, Ken, Ken, Ken has no further questions. So. Um, uh, nifty, uh, nifty little trick there from Ken Blifford, uh, who I don't think mm-hmm. will ever write in ever again. Uh, yeah, Ken's learned his lesson. <laughs> I'm going to turn uh, tables on you, Ben. Uh, because uh, aside from setting each other like you know 17 20 18 minute long uh, voice notes uh, we do tend to send each other hey Ben what you doing uh, I'm thinking of this uh, what do you think about this or like hey Declan I've got this thing and I'm wondering you know where you what you might do with it if you had it and or do you see how that so you and I uh, you and I talk a lot about uh Again, it's why we have a talk show now. Uh, we talk a lot, a lot about this stuff. And I did ask permission. I did say that I was going to uh, use this. Uh, and I'm going to read just for anybody uh, who is watching along. I'm going to read a message Ben sent me because I want to get your take on this. Uh, and I think it speaks to kind of what's going on in chat at the moment as well a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is <clears throat> word for word. Nothing changed. Uh, This is what Ben sent me uh, the last day. Uh, It is rare, although not unheard of, for the gods of the known universe to admit that they can even make mistakes. Uh, Such proud and self-aggrandizing beings don't like to make a habit of admitting their flaws, nor do they appreciate others pointing it out. As As the narrator of this information, I run the risk of their wrath, even inviting you into this tale. And so, when it came to the creation of the world in which the tale is set, even the gods would admit it was built wrong. Wanting no evidence of their failure, it was ordered that the world and all within be destroyed, that a better world be created in its place. Not wanting to sully their own hands, the task of this destruction was fobbed off on a lesser deity. She took the world out behind the back of the universe and prepared to deliver a merciful blow. But so wretched, broken, and unlovable was this world that the lesser deity took pity of, uh, pity, of, pity upon it. Uh, she lifted up the very fabric of reality and swept the world under, away from the eyes of the gods, away from any real chance of prosperity but safe and very much not destroyed, although she did claim to have done so when asked. And so the world and the space it inhabited became known as Refuge, a place where this lesser deity, who never tasked with a godly mistake to destroy, would instead tuck it under reality for safekeeping. Broken relics, ill-thought-out species of beast and burden, loose plot holes and continuity errors, all crammed, sorry, carefully hidden, with nothing but a scrap of chance to wither or thrive of its own accord. Hey, Ben. What you writing that for? (laughs) <laughs> i don't that's very it's uh it's my primordial goop oh. um i i was writing it um to be people who who watch along for for homebrew and who've kind of followed campaign one will know that we're not and i i myself and the players there and, and any kind of potential future uh players at the table will know that we're not doing like long campaigns again um we're gonna try to do like mini little arcs and like kind of quick little sessions and like dip into different systems and stuff so i promised myself i'd never run a long campaign again and then that came into my head and i was like hmm maybe i have a sandbox on my hands that helps me explain lore and problems and plot hooks and like random items and it gives me the opportunity to bring as much in or out 
as possible. And I kind of like this idea of the world of all my games from now on, or at least I kind of like the canon Ben games, whether it's on, on Humber or, or charity streams or whatever, taking place in this broken, forgotten, ugly little existence that's been swept under the carpet in the back of the universe by like a god who's just like, ah, I'll just you know, put it under there. Um, and it's like, I don't know. I was thinking, I don't know where I first wrote it, but I just like sending something like that to players before they start a game as well. To be like, just to level set, this isn't um, Neverwinter. <laughs> it's not Icewind Dale. <laughs> it's not the Forgotten Realms. It's literally the realms that they forgot. Um, and so anything, anything goes. And I think it suits my <laughs> style as a player. Uh, anyone who's DM'd for me before and hasn't handed me a character will know that I often come and say, can I be the concept of Ennui? And they're like, how does that work? And one of my biggest, like, one of my 3 a.m. at a convention chats uh, where I get really irritating, one of my annoying things to say is, but why couldn't a concept exist in a party? Like, you're imagining an elf. Just imagine a concept. Don't worry about it. It's like, what about hit points? I'm like, what do you mean, what about hit points? I have them. Like... What about movement? It's written on a sheet of paper. That's how far I move and when. Um, and like great, like really good friends of mine, uh, I know disagree with me. Like I'm excellent RPGers, excellent DMs, excellent players. They're like, no, Ben, you cannot play a pile of leaves. It doesn't make sense. Um, and to them, I say, this game doesn't make sense. <laughs> You're out of order. <laughs> and so I've made a world, but I've yet to fill it with lore. Um, and to dip into this, because, I don't know, this is probably a hill I'll, I'll, I'll be, not die on, I'll be sacrificed on. In a world, and it's specifically when we're playing D&D, &D, in a world where eight hours cures everything, in what way are you fulfilling your gritty realistic thing? In what way is that not Looney Tunes? That is Looney Tunes. <laughs> That's what we're playing in. We're playing in Looney Tunes land, and the more saturated and land of ooh, and, and more cartoonish you can make it, the more it actually makes sense. And so my little stupid world is tucked under the carpet of the universe by some lower god who wants nothing to do with it, but maybe we'll drop a Vorpal sword in there when needs be. <laughs> See, like I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you. I will argue about playing the pile of leaves, because uh, that's going to be... Uh, an issue uh but i'm not going to argue with you around uh because i'm also in the looney tunes camp i'm in the mm. guys um can we all just take like a second to just take a you know like a, just just take stock of where we are what we're doing and when i say the river runs backwards i don't know why we have to question it because Two seconds ago, you did thaumaturgy to make that man's butt talk. Like, I... Can we can we suspend the disbelief for this as well? Like, I... I I'm with you. I, I, there is... I... There's some pushback in chat. Dylan and Dragon saying, but, but, the vers... Ber, but, but, the verisimilitude... To that I say, I don't know what that word means. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce it. The ver very similitude. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it means. Uh, so therefore, I win. <laughs> how do you pronounce that word? Anyone know? similitude. Yeah, I got, I got, that's what I said. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I... Maybe there's a god of that, and they're like, eh, whatever, if they're having a slow day. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's actually, funny enough, and, and uh, I do want you to help me fill, uh, I have problems with lore, uh, which maybe after the break we can get into. Um, goodness, what was I about to say? It was really smart, too. Damn it. Um, yes. The, I overcome as a very first time DM for homebrew. I started overcomplicating things with lore, and so I used to roll the dice behind the DM screen of which god was in control that day. Um, and I'd be like, "Ah, got a death today. Looks like death saves might be on the cards a little bit more." Um, and my idea was that all the gods were up in the hill of Tara because it was sort of based on uh, Irish mythology. 
and they would play games and they whoever won the game would be get to be god for the day or god for the week or god for whatever you i mean look if you can if you can pull that off my hat's off to you i forgot about it loads i didn't remember to do it i didn't know what it meant and i put handcuffs on the things i wanted to do in the moment um because technically according to me and only me that god was on the, the chair today and no one else was so uh if you're dm out there don't make lore complicated for yourself. Also, gods cheat. Oh, yeah. So that is, again, going back to that Greek, uh, the, the Greek pantheon that I was using, uh, I did have players, they were literally the acolytes of different gods. So uh, there was somebody for Dionysus, there was somebody for Hecate. And it was the thing of like, oh, do we only get like favors uh, from them? And I was like, no. You can totally cheat on your god with another god. You can totally curry favor from somebody else or face the wrath of somebody else or even your own god so uh, ben i love that idea like I, I i might steal that for something yeah, I I do, yeah, yeah if you can pull it off it's just it became too much admin uh, like i wasn't into it no i i think it's cool i think there's something i think there's something fun there i'm like i'm like mm. i'm gonna think about that now i'm gonna use it um we want to get into kind of the more mechanic side of this as well and how, yeah. how we can use it but my cup has runneth dry uh we have runneth over so do we want to go to a very very quick uh break and come back and yeah some stuff yeah uh, that's it uh, yeah yeah cool okay back in All right. two minutes three minutes whenever the gods feel like it we're yeah. oh, i can't say we're, we're god <laughs> no <laughs> we're, we're god <laughs> yeah you heard it here first bigger than jesus <laughs> jesus Oh, we're out. Hi, we're Horde of Tales. We're an EU-based actual play Twitch channel. We have a long-form D&D campaign. You may one, note us as... One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. But the, the plane jumpers. Plane diver. No. Divers? How did we mess this up? <laughs> <laughs> and we're the new home of the EU happy hour. Look, I placed them down where I thought they would go. Oh, I didn't say it was right. <laughs> <laughs> we often have short-term flights that you can be a part of. I have never heard or read a Regency era love letter that sounded more like a booty call. <laughs> it's open to interpretation! Come add to our collection at twitch.tv slash horde of tales. Howdy folks! Welcome to the latest episode of Sorcery Shenanigans. You haven't seen any cows, have you? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast I'm sorry. I'm sorry in advance. I'm going to cast heat metal on the horse's bit. Oh. <gasps> oh. Believed to be sharp. Shara kind of pulls herself back and she's like, well, it looks like we have ourselves a game. And we are back. 
or are we? If you were watching along there and you thought, I've got a pretty cool video or an image or a voice note to one of us or whatever you want to slot in, do get in touch. Um, you can find this on the internet. You can find us right here in chat. Uh, or you can message us under the VODs on YouTube. You can send us a message on the Discord. It's like we're not hard people to find. So um, please do reach out. And it doesn't even have to be your own stuff. If you have someone you want to shout out, if you're like, these people... Uh, deserve all the love you can give them then we'll reach out on your behalf and say hey so and so passed us on do you mind if we grab a promo video we're going to put it in our in our kind of show break um so yeah please do please send on anything and everything you have and we'll fill it in um and we'll just throw it on a little rotating basis it's our community cork board ben also mentioned at the very very start that we are working on an editing interviews at the moment if there's anybody that you're like oh man i'd love if they spoke to these people or this person mm. uh in or out of the TTRPG sphere, tell us. We'll we'll ask yeah. them, uh, and if they've got time, we'll do an interview. Uh, we're our, our thing with this is uh, as much fun as it is Ben and I uh, chatting about it. We love getting to chat to everybody else about TTRPGs. Um, mm-hmm. So if you're like, oh man, let's do this, or oh man, I actually want to do it, or I've got some news about a game I'm in, or a map I'm making, or an event I'm going to, or whatever it might be, that you're like, I think they should know about it. Tell us, give us the inside scoop, and yeah, we'll put it yeah, in. let us know. We'll in in a timely slash once every two weeks live on Twitch fashion, <laughs> and that's the only downside to this not being a a daily show is that sometimes our news might be a little outdated or a little irrelevant. But I still think that the general sense of like hyping people up and sending sending people their direction that's never a bad thing. Time for a segment. And this segment is called Teach Me How to. And then, you know, if we had more time on our hands, we'd have a little chalkboard, teach me how to. And then lore. Teach me how to lore. He says um, this, and I know full well that he's already working on one and after effects. <laughs> <laughs> once we have consistent segments that it's not a waste of time to make something once. <laughs> We're never doing it again. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the end of that. They're never going to show that on TV again. <laughs> um, but we, before the break, were chatting a little bit about to about the primordial soup of, of where my lore is beginning. But one thing, and I've alluded to it throughout this entire episode, I really struggle with is to, like, aside from just lore dumping on players, aside from that moment in a session where you're like, hey, shut up, idiots, listen to me for 25 minutes. Everything you need to know will be contained in here, and I'm only going to do it once every five sessions. Um, aside from that move, which is a valid move and totally fine to do, I don't know a lot of ways on how to, like, feed my player's lore. I don't know that here comes the airplane, open wide, swapping chocolate for broccoli. Um, (laughs) Because my assumption is that players don't want lore. And that's probably a a me thing. And I think I'm wrong. But Declan, is there anything you've found over your... uh, time dming and the reason i don't know how to do this is because when i get sent lore i like like no word of a lie first time going down for romancing declan sent in a word doc and i came with it memorized because i was just like i need to know this. i actually cried um, like i genuinely i actually got really emotional <laughs> at the table uh because the other and i don't care i don't get that one they're probably not watching this two they won't watch the vod and three even if they do watch it they're not going to give a shit none of the rest of them bothered to read it and I've been playing this game with these people for like two and a half years at this point. Not one of them bothered to read it or even look at the map. At one point, Sam turned to you, Ben, and went, how do you know all these things? And it was like, Declan put it in a packet for us. <laughs> like, yeah. oh. Oh, well, I didn't it's, read that packet. <laughs> it's tough. And being 35 years old and, and uh, 30 of those years of my life, since my education began, being the kid in class, being like, how do you know that? It's like, they put it on the board yesterday and we were told to learn it last night. Mm. <laughs> it's like, where did you see that? It's like, it was in the, it was in, it was the, in the brief, brief. we yeah, were given. Yeah, it was in the brief. It's all in, it's all, did no one else? Open the envelope was, and read the brief. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was there. Um, but I have immediately, I have great short-term memory. I've immediately forgotten everything. That is also uh, true. It was, that uh, is it was, also true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now I'm one of the proper people at the table who stopped yeah, reading. Well. And no, but the reason I struggle with lore is because I do, as a player, go, oh, but I know that I'm, I am the note taper player. Uh, so not everyone's going to be like me. So when, when I'm the DM, people expect, because they know that about me, they expect me to also keep track of the lore. 
So I really struggle with with lore in my games with players and how to get it like tasty, good, memorable, you know, usable. Okay. So can I before I get into that? Can I? Because uh, I, you said it a couple. You said it a couple of times last time, and you said it a couple of times while we were planning. You know about this episode, um, and you said it a couple of times tonight. Uh, I really hate the phrase lore dump. Like uh-huh. I really hate that phrase. Um, I um, you are not lore dumping on anything. Like I. That thing of like, oh, it's just a load of information I'm going to bombard the players with. You're doing it because it matters. You're doing it because you created it and you're doing it because you wanted to share it with somebody. Uh, and I like I, and I and don't think Ben is being negative when he says lower dump, but I, I often, that phrase gets thrown around an awful lot when we talk about world building and storytelling and uh, whether whether it's a homebrew or a modular adventure. I, I, meant, I, I had said how daunting... Uh, it can be when you pick up, you know, um, and to kind of say, to speak to what uh, Horseboy was saying, um, that like Lost Minds of Phandelver or Dragon of Iris Spire Peak, whichever of those two it was that you were running, and that like, oh, how do I not do this without, like, th- there's no right way or wrong way to do these things. And when when players come into a new city and there's a temple or a statue, and you know the story behind that. And it's going to be important to them later that they know this or why this is going to happen. That's not lore dumping to be like, and actually, and then this, and also there's this, and also there's this. Uh, there is some really fun ways to, uh, to, to get them into that. But you sitting down and writing about your world, writing for that session, writing about that god, writing about that folksy tradition that this little village does isn't a lore dump it's you storytelling and and i will put my hand up and like i even outside of dnd i am a talker like i love telling stories i love kind of going oh my god actually this thing happened but wait i need to give you the context to what that was so eight years ago uh but you need to know that that person knew them beforehand I'll give you the whole thing. Uh, because when people tell stories to me, I want to know the whole thing. I don't want to just kind of go, oh, oh, okay. Oh. Um, uh, I, but why is it happening? Well, I, I, ben, you, you say that, you know, you, you gobble up lore. Great. That means that when you and I play together, when if, if, <clears throat> if I ever get on Homebrew Quest again, uh, if the ban gets lifted, if, if, if we ever if, come if back, the ban ever gets lifted, <laughs> oh, I get no, drunk on one band. stream. <laughs> it is a great, actually, if you're looking for one shot to watch, I am <laughs> check out the over. It's so good. Um, no, it's 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 not for lack of. Uh, it's if we ever mm. come back, which we will. We, it's definitely it's in the works. It's it's planning. We're just uh, uh, we're we're doing that thing where it's like. Oh, feels a bit rusty. Let's get back into it. Um, but yes, that will be a definite. I so wh- I guess what I'm saying is, uh, don't ever feel like oh, the information you're giving your players is a is is a lower dump because it does. It has such a stigma attached to it. Um, you are giving information because you want them to experience the world the same way you are experiencing it. Um, I I, I want to speak to something that happened actually today because uh, I. Um, I volunteer with a local youth group here in Limerick and I run D&D with them. We play board games and stuff like that. And uh, there was a new player at the, the table today. Uh, and I'm, when I mean new player, I don't mean a new player to, you know, to my games and my style of DM, but just a completely new player, just somebody that really wanted to try it. And uh, there was a map on the table and there was little minis. And again, anyone that's ever played a game with me knows that I don't use either of those things. Um... I don't use virtual tabletop tools. I, I, I just like theater of the mind. I find it for me as a DM and as a player, it's it's more immersive. Um, and he was like, "Oh, are we going to use these?" And I was like, uh, "I mean, if we have to, I can, but I'd rather we just kind of get into it ourselves." And I started describing the the party getting, you know, kind of getting getting going and heading out into the morning and the weather and the, the smells, the the ground under their feet, the fields that they were traveling through. And he turned to one of the other uh, volunteers, one of the other supervisors, and he was like, 
I can actually see this in my head. Um, and I was like, I did it. Like, and that's lore. Like, because I'm describing the weather yeah. in that place. I, like, that kid is now in that world. Like, he is imagining it in his space. And I remember kind of like, and I, I looked over at, shout out to Keith. I looked over at Keith and Keith just kind of like, he got it, like he was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, it's class, isn't it? And I looked over at Keith and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> um, and it was like, it was such a, a fun thing. And that's lore. It, the weather and mm. that description and that space that they're in, why they're there, that's all lore. Um, so, like, to say lore dumping, don't don't say that about your work. Don't say that about your efforts. And that's to the players who come up with the backstory. And like, oh, my backstory is an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Great. I can't wait to pepper that in. Um, but to to speak to the to the actual question ben which was like you know how do you avoid mm -hmm. the overload or how do you get people engaged with it i have a well, uh, lower dump is out context giving is in big oh God, we need it on t-shirts we need it we need it on mugs we need it on, <laughs> we need it on mugs <laughs> i want that as a bookmark um uh, yeah. i i or stamp for yes. a player's head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Laura, dump you. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a um, one of my favorite things, and I'm 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 not uh, like, like Ben. I, I'm going to say Chekhov's gun, and I know you're going to know kind of you know what we're talking about. Maybe, uh, and I'm, if I explain it, I'm probably going to explain it our ways. Uh, but it is that thing of if you were going to take the time to describe something like that and let's go with that statue that kind of faded mm. kind of uh green washed statue of a hero in a village square and you point this out to the players and you go into detail about how it's a noble uh wizard and a familiar of a cat on their shoulder kind of looking kind of proud and like uh the, the, but there's a barrel of like meat under their arm if you're going to describe that in a huge amount of detail then the whole purpose of that is you're kind of telling the players there's something here. Like, this is mm. something. And maybe maybe this is just one of those towns that the party are blowing through on their way to the, to the dungeon, on their way to the king, on the way to the whatever it might be. But there's something about that statue that if the players ask me, like, hey, can I go up and read the inscription? Hey, can I go up and ask the mayor? Hey, can I go and talk to the person in the square who's trying to clean the statue, whatever it is? I'm going to, and <clears throat> this is going to sound awful. Like, I don't know if this is going to sound awful. I actually don't care if it does, to be honest. I'm going to reward the player for engaging with that. I am going to give you mm. a little piece of information now that if if you have to spend the night in this town and you're in the tavern, um, you now know about that hero. And maybe when you're talking to the innkeeper about kind of going, oh, yeah, we're big fans of the place. Uh, you know, we heard about such and such. Uh, it turns out the town are really proud of that guy or, or, or that wizard and his familiar um and he's chuffed that you know him and he's going to give you a discount on the room or you know the mayor is going to be that little bit more friendly to you when you go to ask information you are engaging in the world you're doing all the things that uh a dm wants you to do so you asking questions about the statue that they spent a little bit of time describing uh we're pointing to these things for a reason. Um, and if the players walk past it, the players walk past it. What do I do if the players walk past it? I've, again, it's, 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 it's Ben coming down and reading, reciting the packet from memory. And it's wonderful. Uh, but that's, that was the latter half of season two of Romancing the Dungeon. There are plenty of things that my players have walked past in Romance of the Dungeon, Saving Grace, Beyond Horizon's Edge, Rise of the Forsaken, uh, The War with Heaven, The Tapestry of Shadows. Like, to name the myriad of games I've run, there are all these things that I have written and created that the players walk past. That's totally fine. That, how many times in a video game have you just walked past the statue and, didn't, and or, or pressed X to get through the dialogue? Like, uh, I've seen the problem now. I'm a walk oh, yeah. every inch of the I map press X player. on everything to get the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, I'm that person too. Um, yeah, I'm like, that looks like there's a little fog of war over there. I bet, I know, I know there's nothing yeah. there. 
but I won't be able to sleep unless I walk my character over there and clear the fog of war. I I make my peace with the players. Um, I make my peace with the players not having to engage with everything. But I will reward a player for being like, actually, I I want to go and explore this. I want to I want to find out a little bit about this, because um, I, I I love getting to enrich that space because it makes it a little bit more memorable it makes the session a little bit more engaging and giving them little nuggets those little things about the world that actually when you were in college when you were you know on the you've actually been to this town before you know this already uh you up and you pay your respects to the statue uh, because you know the people of this town uh i love when and oftentimes when we go to a place i will ask characters what do you know about this place like what have you have would mm. your character passed through here before no probably not actually i would have okay here's three things that you know you know the name of the barkeep uh you know this and you know that uh <laughs> so ali cyrus inspect everything get rewards <laughs> uh, yes yes that's, that's what the players for my games should be taking um uh, the rewards are not always level based i would just like to put that out there uh, not always <laughs> never never um, <laughs> Sometimes I de-level for inspecting. I'd like to just remind everybody of that. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't inspect too closely. Things can strip <laughs> levels away. <laughs> they can, uh, which is fun. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm uh, Chekhov's gun. If you're going to take the time to describe something, it has to have purpose. Uh, don't just spend mm-hmm. ages kind of going, la, 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 and then the players go, all right, okay. What, what What's that doing for us? How are we going to use... How, yes. how are we, the players in this world going to use that information that's where it becomes the thing of oh no i just told you something that's just like a cool thing you now know great cool thing i know but what can i use it for like how can i use this to further my character's development the story's development the situation that we're currently in how do i what's the yes and of that there's there's two pieces that i hadn't uh consciously written down as, as dm advice for myself and it's and it's to to pull out what i'm taking from this is when i write down lore or when i started as a dm i was writing down the what this is what you see this is where it is this is what's happening yada 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 but i wasn't scanning back over my work to look for the why and the why is like why should the players care about this and within that why is is also the who cares about this so like I, I love in games, and I always forget to do it as a DM, but I love when it happens where it's like a DM will turn to you if you're the ranger of the group and be like, you'd specifically know this. Or like, actually, of the people here, you two would pick up on this without necessarily asking for a role or, or kind of any, just kind of natural passive class styles. And then the second thing is, I think I'm going to start introducing this to all my session zeros. And as a reminder, you have a character sheet with spendable resources on it. The one thing that's not on there, and I want you to take a pen and write it on there, is lore is a spendable resource. <laughs> when you have something, cash it in. Um, and that's a really good way to get players to care about it. Um, now, like all economies, you keep cashing that same lore, the inflation is going to happen. And it's like, well, look, this trick isn't going to work all the time. Just because you know the mayor. Uh, <laughs> I'm the mayor's this is gonna best develop. friend. <laughs> yeah, you're flooding the market with uh, with lore. Um so those two are really tangible, really good pieces of advice. If you're like me as a DM, who's just like, here's some stuff. Like I remember doing the big kind of homebrew campaign one reveal and being like, yeah, now that little monologue. And then like moments afterwards, and it might be because we, we were drinking on stream. The players were like, huh? Who was up? What was happening? What was who, what, and who? And I just made it, I saved all my frosting and cherries on top for the end, which was a bad thing to do. Um, because I wasn't, I was waiting for the players to be like, to ask me about it and not just giving it to them. And I think that t- t- just ties back into what we we're chatting about in chat, which is like, don't be, don't be hesitant or don't be like hoardy with your lore. Don't hoard your lore. Give it up. You'll always come up with it. You're, you're not a golden goose slayer thing. <laughs> you're not going to run out of golden eggs, is what I'm saying. So lore up. Um, but they're great. That's really, really good. I can't wait to... God, it's been so long since I... De- I love playing, but I do see... I pretend to break kayfabe. I pretend to hate DMing, and I freaking love it. Um, for things like this. Um, and I, God, I just want to DM something. But I will get back to doing that at some point in time. 
Um, and it's a dangerous thing to say in front of Declan as I see his eyes light up. Um, but who knows? Uh, and maybe if you're watching along, you'll be you'll be in in on that as well. There was something in chat, but I think I might have missed it. But it was it just reminded me of something. I think it was probably just don't be stingy with your lore. Um, we're beyond time, but we do have one more thing to do. Um, we could keep it kind of short and tight, like a sack full of baggins. <laughs> I just wanted to, I just wanted to let that sit. I just want to let that. Uh, that's uh, that's one you can tell your kids. It's, it's, it's a safe one. That's a safe little Lord of the Rings joke that you can drop into your day to day conversations. <laughs> there are Bilbo's uh, hard dozens in case you, in case you don't know. Um, and, do you, yeah. Do you, do we want to? Do you want to? Do want to do the thing? Um, or oh, I didn't, don't see why not. I got, I got ten time. minutes. I got time. What can we? What can yeah. we do with ten minutes? Let's. Yeah. Okay. Let's make restriction the mother of so invention. So we we were asking uh, normally we, like with the episodes we ask chat for prompts things to kind of get us going, um, and then just before this uh, when Ben and I were like, oh, what do we want to talk to chat about? We want to get their favorite lore stories. Great, crap. How do we then come up with? And if if you are following along, I would love to know what you come up with actually. So we don't have a command prompt for this one but we have a map uh that ben made um and uh, i'm gonna bring it up on screen now and you can see it it's right there it's lovely um what i would like you to do if you're watching along and even in the vods afterwards uh mm. oh here i am prepping for recording on saturday and the party are going to a new town feel like giving me a curious custom for them oh big Ooh, time. yeah uh, I, i'm just gonna ask uh, i'm gonna ask two questions to them like what's the general vibe of the town and kind of the the geography of it because those are two things that i'm always like what's around the town that i can tie into that and then what are the townsfolk like are they going to be is it, a, is it a town of little weirdos? Is it a town of like, oh, no, we're uptight. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so depending on those answers, I'd love to fandangle something in. Uh, but Ben gave us this map. Um, and we're, we only have 10 minutes or so. So uh, what I would say is if you're going to follow along, find something on the map that you your eye is drawn to. Um, and let's, uh, let's each come up with something. Uh, that we can be like, okay. And again, uh, Ben, do we have free agency on this? Like, if we're like, oh, that building, that building, yeah, like this, I think, and you're like, no, that's not what it is at all. No, no, no. This is, um, I love drawing maps. Uh, I, and I tried to do this sort of like, I some to be full disclosure, it's, it's my least favorite map in terms of style. I don't like how MS Paint I've made it look, but I think it's a really good map for this exercise because I've made. It quite distinctive with like call out landmarks. I wanted to give it to the players so they would turn around and be like, What's that? I want to go there. What's that over there? I want to go there. I wanted to make it look as close to one of those like theme park maps that you get. And you're like, Where are we going next? And so, like, proportions aren't always uh, accurate, but it gives you a good sense of, of districts in, in this place. So, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Anyone who's watched uh, Homebrew will know its lore there. But I'm also a big fan as a DM of reusing resources. Like just because the Dominion of Sleeve Gem exists in um, in Hibernia, it doesn't mean that same kind of district can't exist. I'll tell I'll tell you one piece about the mountain range that that it's nearby. And I I came up with this thing, and they never went there. And I made a world, and the players barely discovered most of it. Um, but it was a thing called the Chorus Mountains, and I was thinking about these giant earthworms that would like bore through a mountainside in such a way that when the wind blows, it would sound like an organ because it would create these natural sort of musical tunnels. So they were called the Chorus Mountains because if you were nearby these mountains or like at least kind of living in the area, you would hear these kind of deep guttural, almost like baritone and bass, like whoa, just constantly singing mountain. Uh, and so the Dominion of Sleep Gem uh, is not within earshot, but it's, it's nearby. If uh, it's part of the part of the range that wasn't like destroyed by giant worms uh, or anything that burrows I, I suppose. that's it's 
knowing the context of that now, I'm like, oh, that's kind of... Uh, it's interesting because I'm, I'm drawn to... This, they're the same thing, but there's two different variants of them. Uh, kind of the top left quadrant and the bottom mm -hmm. right quadrant of the map. The two, what I think are gates. Um, yes. Like there's a water gate and then there's like a gate down here. Uh, they, here, uh, uh, as, I, as I point. But um, I, for me, looking at those, and I, I don't know if they're meant to look like faces um, or if that's mm. an intentional thing. Uh, but to me, that's my, that's exactly what my eyes are drawn to, those two particular uh, gates. And in my head, immediately, I was like, what are those gates called and why are they called that? And uh, the gate on the bottom right is known as Gob, and the gate on the top left is known as Flem. And they were the they're the gates named after the two brothers that helped build this city. Uh, Flem was mm. responsible for the waterworks, sewerage, and everything else like that. Gob was responsible for all the planning and the the filing and the administration, um, and the gates have been kind of uh, not their heads aren't carved into them, but the gates were given sort of the caricatures of uh, each what each of these two dwarven brothers were known for. Uh, both were known for their mustaches. Flem, the water gate, has these sort of two long sort of teal uh, sort of. Uh, blades kind of coming down that the water kind of cascades over to kind of help the flow uh whereas gob has this short stiffy little mustache uh type thing again ben i could be doing your maps a whole disservice here and you're, you're sitting there kind of going no 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 i, I did i did purposely draw them as as faces because i don't know why in my head um i'm actually gonna just for the purpose of this i'm a funny man when it comes to stream theatrics my map was over on this screen, which makes me look like I'm not looking at it. So I've moved it over <laughs> to the screen over here. So it'll, at least it looks like on stream I'm looking at it, which I am. Um, I don't know what it is, but like, it's, it's a dwarven city in my world, as you might tell from the mining and the mine carts and, and sort of the um, cavernous sort of vibes to it. And I don't know what it is, but it, like, it's probably because it exists in plenty of fantasy places. Dwarves love, the, love carving faces into stuff. So uh, these dwarves carved a, a face into a waterfall and a face into... Actually, I think the face into the mines, like down into the actual kind of construction and, and industrial area of the town. Um, and it's not very clear from the map, but it was... It's These theoretically are all on top of each other. Yeah. They're not like... It's not like a sloping hill, but it's just like section one, section two. So you have to go down as opposed to... But how do you draw a lot if you're not an artist? Um, so the waterfalls were trying to <laughs> give that sense of down um but i love gob and phlegm and i like one thing i love about the lore you bring is that there's people attached to stuff it's something i always forget to do that i draw a map and then i forget like well who built that and why did they build that oh no oh no i think it happened again i think ben's internet oh he's back he's back he's back it's fine yeah, yeah oh thank god oh it did look like i'm frozen there um but yes the if this is true, what else is true situation? You still got me? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lesson learned. Internet can last about an hour <laughs> where I am. Um, so I really love that. We have an answer from Dylan and Dragons about the custom. Um, yep. I think you've given a great example of, of things you can pick out in a map and how to add to it. I think we'll leave the rest as a fill in your own adventure for the audience. Mm -hmm. But what Dylan and Dragon, Dragons is saying for their session on Saturday, around the town, it's a series of tunnels and caves similar to what you could find in central Ireland. Vibe of the town, a town that's grown exponentially in the last 10 years, that's come into money from trading and is still figuring it out. Uh, I have a couple of ideas, but I don't know if you want me to riff on that while you think on what's next. You do. Uh, you do that. And I will, what I'll do is I can get the raid primed. So that when we go to bat, uh, yes. so you, because yes. I have I have a very quick one that I'd like to add as well. But you you take the helm on this. Yes. So my first thinking is the it's the it's the still figuring it out, <laughs> which I really like. And as much as Declan is a huge Shakespeare fan, I'm a huge um, Samuel Beckett fan. And there's a scene in Waiting for Godot where they keep swapping hats, so they trade hats over and over and over again, uh, and they all end up with the same stuff. So one of the customs they might do is that. Uh, every interaction or every meeting starts with with the market swap. No one ever loses anything they they brought, 
but they do get passed around kind of one by one. So it's just like, oh, I'll try to do uh, my hat for your belt. Great, cool. I'll try to do this belt for that waistcoat. Great. That waistcoat for this hat. Absolutely perfect. That hat for that belt. Brilliant. And we've done business. And the mere act of like changing hands, you know, it's a magic world. So maybe it does increase the value of things. Um, but this idea of there's like a little middleman fee, um, not literally, but just the sense of it's been traded, so it's more valuable. Um, being a custom they might have. The only thing I thought of straight away before we got context was just they're obsessed with middle names. If you're like, hi, uh, my name's Ben. It's like, yeah, what's your middle name? What's the, what else you got going on in there? Um, which I like doing as a DM, where it's just getting players to think about aspects of their character that they haven't thought about yet. Those are my two little uh, additions. Use them or leave them. I don't mind. I have uh, a quick one. And mm -hmm. it could be a nice way, again, just depending on what you might want to do with it afterwards. But uh, the, you know, the whole take a penny, leave a penny thing. Uh, mm. Take a copper, leave a copper. And every building you go into has a take a copper, leave a copper dish. Uh, and it's done as a, well, it keeps up, you know, um, it just kind of it keeps the system of money moving throughout uh, and so on and forth and we're all in this together isn't that wonderful but there's something there's a deeper meaning to it and all the copper pieces that go onto that little plate get enchanted so that money can be tracked and traced throughout the town uh so they have an idea because if they're all just getting used to it uh it is that thing of well let's just let's put a little enchantments on the coins and we can see mm -hmm. how much money is in the town, how much money is coming in, how much money is going out. So you take that enchanted piece of copper and you put it into your uh, your coin bag and suddenly your thing is good to go. Um, yeah. You've made me think of two things. Uh, one's a stupid pun. You should have a stock market. It's where they sell stocks to put criminals in. Uh <laughs> we got it auto, it auto rated us. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yes. All right. Good to go. Oh, bugger. It, Not to worry. But yeah, I know, but it should have been set up to just... Hold on. Oh, that's all right. Is there a way to turn it? Right. I, I just set it up that it was like, we raid. Uh... Oh, no, don't worry. Note to self, the next time we raid, just have it ready to go and don't hit the... Because I, all I hit was start raid, and then it's like... Then there was an option of leave to raid. Oh, so like, yeah. Like, wait there then, and then everybody was... Maybe it was when everyone said they were good to go that it was like, okay, we're all good to go. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Not to worry. That's hilarious. How are we all? Where is it? Oh, God. That's gas. Surprise, right? Do we want to do a 